Here is Manuel sailing his boat off a small island. Look what a magnificent fish he has caught. It's a pleasant picture. However, when we turn it upside down, everything changes. Suddenly we see a different image. Now there is a large and rather fierce bird. I'm afraid that it seems as though it's got Manuel in its beak. In one sense, nothing has changed. We haven't added or subtracted a single line or dot, but we have two different images. Which is real? Well, they both are. There is only one picture, but depending on how we look at it, we see two very different images. The boat, the bird. Someone who I'm sure would have enjoyed that optical illusion is the writer of the fourth gospel, named after the apostle John. This is the last of the biblical gospels. It was probably compiled sometime towards the end of the first century, perhaps in the city of Ephesus. Most probably behind it lies the teaching and memories of the Apostle John. It is the fruit of many years of meditating and pondering by John and others on the words and actions of Jesus. Unlike the first three Gospels, which only contain short stories and sections of teaching, this Gospel has long, thoughtful meditations on the significance of Christ. The author is keen to show a deeper meaning in the passages that he retells. So why might he have enjoyed my one picture with two images? Because he does much the same thing in his Gospel. Many of the stories have double meanings, depending on how you look at them. Frequently, Jesus' opponents can only see one dimension, but turn the story upside down and you find a deeper meaning. So we should not be surprised then when, in this Sunday's Gospel, we get another passage with a double meaning. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. It's only a few days since he has fed the 5,000 with some loaves and fishes. That surprising lunch would have been naturally in everybody's mind. Now, however, Jesus shocks the congregation with his words. I am the bread of life, the bread that has come down from heaven. What? From heaven? What nonsense. This, this Joe's boy, we remember him playing in our streets as a kid. Okay, the miracle with the five loaves and two fishes was pretty impressive, but that doesn't mean he comes from heaven. So the Gospel reports them complaining. He's not this Jesus, Joseph's son, whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I've come down from heaven? From heaven. Again, John is showing our two realities in one picture. Yes, this is Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, he comes from a local family. Yes, he is completely and truly human. But, seen from a different angle, there is another reality present. He is also the incarnate Word of God. 
the bread from heaven, the fullness of divine life. Once more his opponents can only see the picture in one way. This was not only an issue for the church in Ephesus, it has been a recurring paradox over the centuries. How can Jesus be both fully human and fully divine? Yet John is emphatic. Both realities are there in one picture. Furthermore, Jesus is not just from heaven, he is bread from heaven. Through Moses, the Israelites were saved from starvation in the desert by God giving them bread. This was manna, the small white bread-like substance that nourished those escaping slaves. However, as this gospel reminds us, eventually, like everybody else, their lives ended. We hear, your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This Gospel is silent about the Last Supper. There is no account of Jesus sharing bread and wine with the words, this is my body, this is my blood. Instead we hear those words we've just had in the Gospel. The bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. And this is the bread that comes from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. Again, we are challenged to turn our lives upside down and see another reality. When we gather for the Eucharist, we share bread and wine. If you subject that, those consecrated elements to scientific examination, you would find only bread and wine, because that's what they are. However, if you look from another angle, we will know a deeper truth. When the priestly people of God, the church, takes bread and wine, when the priest, as their mouthpiece, prays the Eucharistic prayer over the gifts, Something has changed. A new reality is present. At one level, we eat bread, we drink wine, and one day we will die. Yet, at a deeper level, we are nourished by the bread from heaven. We receive the divine life, the divine love of Christ, from which not even death can separate us. Like my picture, two realities are present, although we may have to turn our lives upside down to see the deeper one. Jesus also says to us, I am the living bread that come down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Amen.